Okay, so we are in uh, Introduction to Statistical Learning. Uh, we're in Chapter 5. We're in the Applied Question, uh, question number 8. Uh, so this has several parts, and so we'll just kind of take tackle them one at a time. Um, so we're going to perform cross-validation on the simulated data set this is the gist. Okay, so part A is we're going to use this code here to generate our uh, sample set or our uh, generated data, our simulated data. Uh, so that's what I've done here. Okay, uh, I've slightly modified it. Instead of putting 100 in here, I've just defined n as being 100 and used that instead. Um, what is uh, what is our sample size n? Well, that's 100. Uh, and then what is p? Uh, so p for our for our data is um, is one two. We have two terms defining x. Okay. Uh, well, um, we have uh, we will need two coefficients, or, or our model assumes two coefficients: one for x and negative two for x squared, and that's p. Okay. Um, we're going to use a model that is going to have p is going to assume p greater than two, uh, or 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 less than. It's going to not equal exactly two, but um, anyway. Okay, so part B, we're asked to plot x against y, or maybe that should be y against x, but however, uh, this is how we get it. So we have y on the y-axis, x on the x-axis, and we get this nice parabolic shape, which makes complete sense because uh, we have used x squared in, in defining x. Right? We have this quadratic term that's going to help us define that parabola, or it's going to define that parabola. Okay, now part C, um, we're going to fit several models here. And we'll look at those models here in a second. And then for each of them, we're going to compute, leave one out, cross-validation. Okay. So the models are very similar. Um, the first model has x. The second model has x to the x squared. Or it's not x to the x squared, but an x and x squared term. The third model has an x and x squared and x cubed. And, and then eventually the fourth model has x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth. Okay. Um, so we're going to fit each of these models, compute the cross-validation error, the leave one out cross-validation error. Uh, now, to compute the, the cross-validation error, we're going to use this command right here called cvglm, and that is part of the boot package. So first, we need to install and load the boot package. Okay? Um, we're also told to set a random seed here, and I'm using one. You can use whatever. Uh, and often, I'll, I'll ignore this, uh, this particular instruction. Um, but here, uh, we in the, the next part, we are going to set the seed to a different value and then compare the outputs. So, uh, so it's important that we actually set a seed here. Um, so, uh, so here's my code uh, to find the cross-validation error for all of these. Okay, so uh, the the question tells us that we should probably use a put our data in a data frame. So I've done that, and then I'm predefining a vector that is going to contain the cross-validation errors for the different models. I've also defined this, and I'll, and I'll explain that later. Um, and so now, uh, so what am I going to do here? I'm going to create a for loop, and what's in the for loop? Well, first I fit the model. Okay, so here's the model. And um, so it's y being regressed on some polynomial term of x. What is the greatest degree for this polynomial term? Well, it's i. And what is i? i ranges from 1 to, now th this should be 4, but I'm going to use 12, okay? Why 4? Why 4? Because we go all the way up to a fourth degree polynomial. So we'll have a model that where i equals 1, and we'll just get this. We'll have i equals 2, and we'll get this model, i equals 3, i equals 4. And then I'm actually going to go all the way up to 12 because I want to demonstrate something that uh, is a little bit outside of the purview of the question. But anyway, um, so we're going to fit that, and then we're going to compute the cross-validation error for that model, and that's going to go into this vector that we already created. And how do we compute that? Well, with the CVGLM thing here. Okay. Um, these are the commands we need. This command right here will return a list of which one of the elements is called delta, and that's the thing that we want. Okay. That, that's going to be the, 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 uh, the, the, the total cross-validation error. And it actually gives us two values, two estimates of it, and so we need to select which one we want. So we're going to select the first one. Okay. Now, this summaries thing is going to give us the summary 
output for each of these models and we don't need it for this question but we will need it for, for uh, later in this for a later part of this question okay so I've already uh, ran this maybe I'll run it again just for the heck of it um, uh, and so I'm plotting the cross validation errors here and this is what it looks like okay so we go from just the x to the x squared model to the x squared x cubed x x squared x cubed x to the fourth and then I, I'm going all the way up to degree 12. And so you notice that after we go, after we get to x squared, we kind of level out in terms of cross-validation error, right? We have a big cross-validation error without uh, uh, the x squared term, and then it drops. And then adding additional polynomial terms doesn't really improve the fit. Uh, but once we get too complicated, the cross-validation error starts to skyrocket. That's what's going on here. Okay. Um, so now we're going to repeat the same thing, but with a different random seed, right? So remember we had uh, seed set at one. Now I'm setting it at two, but you know you can just arbitrarily set these to whatever. Um, in fact, uh, well, I'll just leave it the same. Um, so uh, so I'm running exactly the same code, although I'm not computing the summaries for each of for each of them. Uh, and then I I've already done this, and so I'm plotting the cross validation error across the different terms, and th that is this plot right here, right? It's uh, you can see them overplotted. One should be red and one should be black, but they're so overplotted, you know, it's hard to see uh, see the difference because there is no difference. They're the same. Okay. Um, so why? Why do, even though we change the random seed, why, uh, why do these two runs give us the same output? Well, the answer is because in our for loop, uh, for, for both runs, there is no randomness involved here, okay? The first command here, the GLM command, this is this is a deterministic calculation on the data. There's no randomness there. Okay, we're all we're always going to get the exact same thing here. And then for the cross validation error, okay, this is where there could be some randomness. Okay, um, now when might there be random randomness? Okay, well let's say that we wanted to run cross validation and we wanted to break our data up into uh, into 10 different sub data sets and we ran cross validation on that. Well, there would be randomness in terms of how we uh, split the data up. Okay. And so different runs could give different answers to the cross validation error. But here, uh, because we're doing where, where each one of our group size is one, we, we effectively test each uh, observation all by itself. So in other words, there is no random recombining of data observations, right? Because we're, we're testing each observation all by itself. Therefore, there is no randomness when we have leave one out cross validation. Okay. Um, so um, that's, that's why they're completely overplotted, why they're completely equivalent. Okay. Now, uh, part eight E uh, is uh, which of the models in C, or I guess we could say in D because they're equivalent, uh, have the smallest leave one out cross validation error? Okay. Um, is this what you expect, expected? Explain your answer. Okay. So this can be a little bit of a nuanced answer, actually. So, um, so the question only asks us to go up to degree four, but we went up to degree 12. And so I'm going to answer it as though we were supposed to go up to degree 12. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm using the order function here, which is going to tell me which entries, which models have the lowest to the highest leave one out cross validation error. And notice that number five, which is right here, has the lowest leave one out cross validation error, followed pretty closely by two, followed by, th you know, three, four, six, etc. Okay. Um, so is this what you expected? Okay. So, um, what what should we have expected? Well, what we should expect, given the definition of our data, right right here, given the definition of our data, we probably should have expected that the second degree polynomial model would do the best. Why? Because that is exactly what our data is, or not exactly. Our our, our model is expecting an intercept, and we have an intercept of zero here. But uh, ignoring that, okay. So. Notice that how this form right here very much mimics at least this part of of the second model. Okay, um, and and indeed we find that that uh, 
that the second model does have pretty low error. In fact, it has the second lowest of everything. Okay. Now, should we have expected number five to do better? Well, no, we shouldn't have expected it to do better. Is it surprising? Well, no, not really. Why? Because our data was randomly generated. So even though, right, it had a, it had a random component in there, right? We, we had a, uh, where are we here? We had this random component in our data generation, okay? Therefore, um, even though we expect this to be the best, or, you know, to that model, the second degree polynomial model to do the best, the randomness that is contained in this in this random term could be enough to accidentally cause a different model to fit better. Okay, but that is just the randomness of the data, and that's just kind of uh, that, that's just kind of the nature of randomness and sampling. Um, so, do we expect that? No, not necessarily. Okay, um, but what we certainly do expect is that to go from degree one to degree two, we should have a pretty small drop. We should expect that if we make too complicated of a model, that the leave one out cross validation will start to increase, which is in fact what we see. We should expect to see that several models will be roughly equivalent, and that's what we see. Okay, so so in that sense, um, so in that sense, there's nothing surprising about any of this, even though on average we should expect the second model to have done the best. Okay. Um, all right. So now we're on uh, F. I believe F. I believe F is the last part, okay? And so, uh, so we're meant to comment on the statistical significance of the coefficient estimates that results from fitting each model and see, do these uh, results agree with the conclusions based on the cross-validation results? Okay, so let's break that down. So first, uh, let's talk about the, sig the statistical significance, okay? Where is that coming from? Well, if you remember way back up here in part, what is this, uh, part C, uh, we computed, uh, you know, we, we, we grabbed the summaries of each of the models that we fit, okay? And so each one of these summaries is going to give us the coefficients, among other things, but it's going to give us the coefficients of the models, okay? So um, I guess, oh, so there's 12 of them here, so, so forgive all of the scrolling. But here's the first model where we just have an X term, okay? So we have an intercept and an X, okay? And this is the output, okay? And let, let's just look at the output here, okay? So we, we, well, let's just look at the significance markers, okay? So we see that both of these terms are significant, okay? Um, now, once we get into the second degree uh, model, we see that both the first degree and the second degree, in other words, the, the coefficient for x and x squared are both significant, and the intercept is not, okay? Uh, al already notice how this mimics, notice how this mimics our data generating process, which is right here, right? We had an x term, which was one, and uh, and an x squared term that had a, a coefficient of negative two. Okay, and so those two terms should be significant, or you know, you know, have low p values in general. Those, those should have low p values. Okay, um, I'm, I'm I want to I don't want to rely on the language of significance because it's a little bit of an arbitrary threshold. Okay, notice that the intercept is well, let's look at the coefficient estimates. It's about negative two, which is the correct, or, or which is the coefficient that we input for x squared. And for x, it's about one, which again is pretty close to what we inputted in the data generating process. And the coefficient is not significant. It has a rather high p-value, but it has an estimate that's roughly correct. So um, now the reason that we shouldn't expect this to be significant is because the estimate is going to have some standard error, and if this is really, really close to zero, well, then any standard error at all is probably going to is probably going to uh, be large enough. It's going to be the standard error is going to be larger than our estimate is to zero because the estimate should be zero. So, so we shouldn't expect the intercept term to be significant as we go on. Okay, so now we go down to the cubic model here. Okay, and we see a pretty similar trend here. We see only significant terms for x and x squared, and that the coefficient for the intercept is near zero, not significant, and the intercept for the cubic term of x is near zero, non-significant, okay? Um, which is uh, pretty correct, okay? And that pattern continues as we scroll down, although uh, as we add more and more terms, the coefficients for x, uh, x, squared, uh, x and x squared 
they get further from their from the correct values. But that's to be expected because um, we have all of these other terms that are trying to soak up the randomness inherent in the data, if that makes sense. So, um, so, uh, so that's interesting. So even when we come all the way down here to the to the 12th degree polynomial, we see that the only kind of low p-values, even though they're not significant, again, which is an arbitrary threshold, but the only ones that are, you know, lowish, or the two lowest ones, let's say that, are uh, are for x and x squared, okay? So, uh, so do these align then with, um, with the uh, cross-validation errors that we've been looking at? Uh, I would say yes, in a lot of ways, yes. Okay, so um, so for one, remember that the that the first model uh, had uh, had a significant uh, intercept and x term, which doesn't really mean anything here. But as soon as we add that uh, second through that second term, we have a major reduction in error for the cross validation, and the x and x squared terms were significant. They had low p values in the linear models. And then as we add terms, it, those, in the cross-validation, we see that the error does not really change much for several terms here. And that is paralleled by the fact that as we add terms, none of the additional terms above x squared is significant. So uh, I guess that the answer here uh, is that, that yeah, the, uh, the cross-validation error you know, does line up uh, pretty well with the, with the p-values in the respective uh, uh, outputs for the linear models.